America's Evening News with Tom Nova. Good evening, America. There is great tension in China and the Middle East at this hour as American forces in China are reporting advancements in America's war efforts. There are unconfirmed reports that civil unrest has debilitated the Chinese military in the Hunan and Shanxi regions. A spokesman from the office of Lord Jeremy Orb has taken questions from reporters about these developments. Let's take a listen to what she had to say just moments ago. Can you speak about why the Chinese have not used any more nuclear devices in these last few weeks? They were effective in slowing down the American advances, and now that America is advancing again, they haven't even threatened to use any. Does anybody in the kingdom know why? Well, the Chinese apparently have a war strategy they feel is what will be most effective. Using nuclear bombs on their own soil has caused environmental damage and human casualties that we can't even begin to assess right now because the war is ongoing. We suspect their reluctance to continue using nuclear weapons seems rather obvious. They probably figure there is too much loss involved for them to continue that strategy. Next question. Yes, thank you. My news agency and others have been contacted by anonymous sources who claim China and the Middle Eastern Alliance are digging a massive tunnel under Israel. Would you comment on that? Comment on what? Would you confirm or deny that the Chinese and Middle Eastern Alliance are digging a massive tunnel under Israel? And if they are, why do you think they would do that? I'm not sure where you're getting your information, but we are not prepared to comment on something we are unsure even exists. I'm afraid that's all the questions I can answer today. Thank you all for coming to the press conference. Well, it seems there is much more surrounding the war efforts than meets the eye. Oreb's spokesman did not want to address the question of a rumored underground tunnel in Israel and vaguely addressed the Chinese nuclear bomb questions before abruptly ending the whole press conference. We will certainly stay on top of this story. So far, the number of casualties estimated are a staggering figure, well into the millions. Hold it. I'm being told some video has surfaced from the Shanxi province in China. The video apparently shows Chinese citizens in the streets. We're putting the video on your screen now. It appears the Chinese are rioting, but it is unclear who they are fighting with. It does not look like any American or European military personnel are involved. Holy smokes, what you are witnessing right now is raw footage. This has not been edited and it looks like the Chinese people are fighting among themselves. Well, these are some disturbing images. We're going to take a break here and sort through these videos that are coming in. And when we come back, we'll bring in some experts on the nation of China to speak with us about these developments and also these videos coming in from the Shanxi region. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. New Kingdom Radio Theater. Are you a fan of the rise of King of Silas? Do you find this epic story entertaining? Well, we've got some great merchandise for you. Hi, I'm Angelica. I'm from the podcast A Little Bit of Everything with me. Go to tpublic.com slash user slash King of Silas and choose from an assortment of t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, stickers, and much more. The King of Silas storefront has something you'll love. Go to tpublic.com slash user slash King of Silas. That's t-e-e-public.com slash user slash King of Silas today. While the world became distracted with the civil unrest in China, Lord Vargas and his Beasts of the Earth henchmen hunted down those in underground illicit trade networks. They came upon the compound of the sinister drug and human trafficking cartel, the Marcos Narcos, near the mountains in El Cacho. Rather than attack them head on, 
they instead surrounded the compound where the cartel was hiding. They refused to come out from within the walls of their commune. Then, the henchmen discovered an underground water system that channeled into the water supply of the compound. Vargas ordered an odorless, colorless poison be put in the water going to the cartel's hideout. Within days, the poison killed all of the people in the cartel, including their wives and families who were with them. Among the dead were women and children who were being trafficked to be sold as slaves. Vargas ordered all the bodies be placed in a pile and burned to ashes. He repeated this type of extermination throughout Central and South America, killing thousands of people at the time indiscriminately and with no remorse. Nothing deterred Vargas and his henchmen, not even the killing of babies or the elderly in proximity of those in the underground networks. Orale, let's head out of Colombia now, Romulo. Take your men ahead of us, go into Venezuela. I want a report on all the cartels between San Cristobal and Caracas. That could take a while. How much time do we have? The king is impatient. He wants an update by the end of the week. We are way below the number we need to be. No, oh, we're close to a million people. King Asilas killed 8 million people in one day when he bombed London. One million people in two weeks is nothing. We need to make real progress. Damn it. Yeah, I don't think there are 8 million cartels, Jefe. Come to think of it, there are 35 million Venezuelos. Lumulo, find out how many of them stopped believing in God. They're Americans. We take care of our own people, Jefe. Right? Would you rather have this conversation with El Rey? Romulo, if the people of Venezuela love God, then send those true believers a message. Tell them to leave the territory of Venezuela now. Tell all the true believers to migrate north, all the way to the original states. Jesus is coming back, and they will be safe there. Go to the radio and television stations there. Speak to all the people in all the parts of the Venezuelan territory, even the rat-infested brothel areas. Tell everyone in the whole territory that El Rey Asilas is calling all true Christians, all true believers in God, to migrate to the northern original states. Tell them to leave their belongings, only take what they can carry. Go by train, bus, plane, whatever, but leave the Venezuelan territory. Tell them the pale horse is coming, and that those who leave will be spared the judgment of God. Those who stay... will die. My princess, I have the information you requested. But let me warn you, the king is known to change his itinerary multiple times, sometimes at the last minute. I heard it from a very reliable source that he'll be in Rome in three days. Are you sure? Not 100%, but it will be a full moon in three nights. It makes sense he'll be there for that. Why does the full moon matter? Something to do with rituals and numerology, I can't say for certain. I've never been into any of that devil worship stuff. Devil worship? I thought the king was against devil worship. He is. But like people say, the road to power is littered with hypocrisy. Look, they say there will be some ceremony within the Vatican that night. I don't know the exact time, but perhaps your other people might be able to connect the dots. Okay. 
I guess this is something to start with. Thank you, Lord Richards. If the plan succeeds, we could be well on our way to ruling the world. You know, Princess, we haven't discussed what exactly my role will be once Jacob becomes king. I think we need to settle that business, don't you? I suppose so. Perhaps you will marry my mother like you promised in the past? Then you will be the queen's stepfather. I will appoint you to the first seat on the High Council. You will replace Lord Oreb. First seat? And just out of curiosity, what will you do with Oreb? <laughs> we will not have any use for Lord Oreb or Lord Shelley for that matter. They will be demoted, I don't know, to where. Maybe we'll send them to Antarctica with Lord Capone. <laughs> That's mighty cold, princess. <laughs> Silas, you are here early. I wasn't expecting you until the day after tomorrow. I am full of surprises, aren't I, Pontiff? Indeed, my son. Come here. Let me take a closer look at you. You know, I heard you heal the sick on a daily basis now. But I had to come see for myself. It's truly heart-wrenching, all these sick people here. How many people do you see in a day, Holy Father? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes twenty, sometimes a hundred. It depends on how busy my schedule is. This is truly amazing. So, all you do is touch them and they heal? How, how do you do it? I don't know, Osiris. It is God that does that. I am merely a conduit for the healing hand of the Lord. But you didn't answer my question yet. Oh yes, I, uh, I came, I came here early because I may not be able to come when I said I would. And why not? Don't you know how difficult it was to schedule everyone to be here at that time? It might be impossible to get everyone together again for this occasion. You have to be there. I realize the inconvenience this will cause, but believe me, it is best I am not there. I don't believe that for one second. You are the king, the king of the world. 
everybody and everything waits for you. You can come and go as you please, no matter what. So what could possibly be so important that you cannot make our ceremony? You understand that this is completely unacceptable, Asylus. Careful, Holy Father. Your anger might interfere with healing of the sick. Look, I'm sorry about it. That's why I came to see you personally. If I didn't care, I would not have come all this way to tell you face to face. I hope that means something to you after all. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, my son. I, I didn't mean to sound abrasive. You did good coming to see me in person to tell me this. However, I still want to know why. Because I believe there are people in your circle. People that will be at the ceremony that are going specifically for one reason. They will try to assassinate me at that ceremony. That is absurd, Asylus. No one in our circle is plotting against you. God have mercy on you, son. For heaven's sake, you are being paranoid. I am not being paranoid, Holy Father. I am being careful. I trust my instincts, and they have never let me down. Tell the group I will meet them at a later date, on my terms. I hope you understand, I cannot meet in secret with people I do not know. It would be foolish of me to do that. I really hope you will understand and forgive me, Holy Father. Well, I do forgive you. But I don't understand, and we'll leave it at that. There is one other thing, Holy Father. And what is that? You will likely be called to visit South America soon, to heal people. It's going to be very ugly. The pale horse, I presume? Yes, Holy Father. Good. Then this meeting was not a waste of time after all. There are more people in the Colombian territory than there are in Venezuela, Ramiro. Your message reached all the way there and many true believers have migrated north. Hundreds of thousands of people are heading up through Panama, Costa Rica and Nicaragua. I want you to move ahead from Guyana to French Guyana. Al San Francisco to Ecuador and Peru. Francisco made it back? That son of a... Pero, jefe. I, I thought we were only moving into the Venezuelan territory. I don't understand. I don't pay you to understand, Romulo. I pay you to be La Tropeta. You wanted to get far away, so that's what I was going to make you do. The news is spreading, so make the announcements as soon as you make it to Guyana. Francisco will swing across into Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia, and then we'll all meet up in Brazil. Wait a minute, Jefe. All those people in those territories do? Oh my God, that's not right, Jefe. I'm going to make this very easy for you, Rabiu, while I still like you. You will do as I say and start the mass migration of true believers, or I will shoot you. Are you going to be able to do this or what? Or am I going to have to blow your kneecaps off, skin you alive, and then torture your entire family the same way? Your daughters too, you understand? Understood, Efe. Orale, vamanos! Efe, El Ray is trying to call you. White Horse, this is Pale Horse. Are you calling for a status? Your status and update directives. I'm listening, my king. Have one of your generals stay in the South American territories for a few days. I need you to head back to Mexico and locate the missing Drax machinery that was smuggled there a while back. Yes, I remember. My henchmen were on the trail, but it went cold. Where was the last trace of them? We lost the scent in the Durango region, my king. That's too close for comfort. They may have smuggled it into the original states by now. What am I looking for, exactly? I need more intel to narrow down the possible channels. These would be very large machine parts, some as big as a car. Maybe your traffickers using big trucks are moving them. Some of them would be very large, spiny, cone-shaped objects. These machine parts are going to be assembled somewhere, yes? Yes, I suspect they'll be assembled in the original states. Maybe near the capital. It seems like the logical target of our enemies, sir. 
Something tells me it can't possibly be that obvious, Lord Vargas. Get back to me when you find something. And what about the rest of South America? I also need to be there to complete the next phases of the mass exterminations. I am sending Gabriel to teleport you back and forth. He doesn't know what you are doing. I told him you were trying to provide aid and assistance in the outbreak happening down there. Forgive me, my king, but Gabriel will know I'm lying to him. He is a very smart little man. Don't let him hang around. Make a strict schedule with him and stick to it. He has other business to take care of, so don't invite him to hang around. Out. America's Evening News with Tom Novak. We have breaking news at this hour. A state of emergency has been declared in the Venezuelan and Colombian territories. An apparent outbreak of epic proportions is being reported from all major metropolitan and rural areas in both regions. Literally, a million people are migrating north through the land bridge of the Panama Territory, Costa Rican, and all territories north. There is no official word from the offices of King Asilas or Lord Oreb, but a spokesman for the regent, Prince Jacob, has confirmed that the situation is being monitored. The spokesman released a statement just moments ago that Prince Jacob is sending military personnel to the Central American territories to provide assistance to the mass migration of people heading into the Northern Hemisphere of the American states. The Center for Diseases has also released a statement, and I quote, Americans throughout all territories of the kingdom will be given every available form of assistance during the epidemic crisis happening in the South American region. We are sending our top scientists to the affected areas with the densest populations to assess the infections and give treatment to the sick." End quote. This troubling news has even caused alarm bells to sound at the Vatican in Rome, and many are calling on Pope Innocent XIV to visit the territories to heal the sick there. But there has been no official word from the Pope as to what, if anything, he will do about the crisis in the South American territories. More on this breaking story when we return. There is much more information coming in now. Stay tuned, everyone, as we try to relay the most pertinent information so all Americans can be safe. We'll be back after these messages. You've been listening to The Rise of King of Silas, Episode 38, Outbreak, starring J.V. Torres as King of Silas, Dan Delgado as Lord Alberto Vargas, Jonathan Bevel as Romulo, Don Radzinski as Newsreader, Derek Graziano as Reporter 1, Kevin Oaken as Reporter 2, David S. Deer as as Pope Innocent the 14th, Dan Lane as Henchman, Maria Mikla Savage as Oreb Spokesperson, and narrated by Sergei Brezhnikov. This episode features the song I Got a Plan to Rule the World by McCullough. For more information about the cast, the music, or other contributors to this production, please visit us at www theriseofkingasilas.com for a full list on our Season 3 episode page. And now, a word from our podcast friends. Are you a podcast fan and you're looking for a new audio drama to get into? Check out A Journey Beyond the Skies. A Journey Beyond the Skies is a sci-fi series told through the narrated journal entries of Declan Wolfe. Join Declan as he embarks on a journey that will take him everywhere from a cyberpunk city through dangerous wastelands and even beyond Earth itself. There's even a Patreon page featuring expansive bonus content like pages from Declan's own journal, which include his notes and sketches about the world around him. 
The podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and most other podcast platforms. For more information, visit journeybeyondtheskies.com. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theater in Baltimore, Maryland, copyright 2020. And stay tuned for episode 39.